एवरी वन वेलकम टू एन सी आर टी ऑडियो बुक तो इस वीडियो में हम ऑर्गेनिज्म एंड पॉपुलेशन का रेस्ट पार्ट को कम्प्लीट करेंगे थर्टीन पॉइंट टू पॉपुलेशन बट बिफोर दैट इफ यू आर न्यू टू द चैनल प्लीज सब्सक्राइब इट थर्टीन पॉइंट टू पॉइंट वन पॉपुलेशन एट्रीब्यूट्स इन नेचर वी रियरली फाइंड आइसोलेटेड सिंगल इंडिविजुअल्स ऑफ एनी स्पेसीज मेजोरिटी ऑफ दैम लिव इन ग्रुप्स इन अ वेल डिफाइंड जोग्राफिकल एरिया शेयर और कम्पीट फॉर सिमिलर रिसोर्स पोटेंशियली इंटरब्रीड एंड दस कंस्टिट्यूट अ पॉपुलेशन ऑल दो द टर्म इंटरब्रीडिंग इम्प्लाई सेक्शुअल रिप्रोडक्शन अ ग्रुप ऑफ इंडिविजुअल्स रिजल्टिंग फ्राम इवन ए सेक्शुअल रिप्रोडक्शन इज ऑल्सो जनरली कंसिडर्ड अ पॉपुलेशन फॉर द पर्पज ऑफ एकोलॉजिकल स्टडीज ऑल द कॉर्मोरेंट्स इन अ वेट लैंड रैट्स इन एन अबेंडन डवेलिंग टी कोड ट्रीज इन अ फॉरेस्ट ट्रैक बैक्टीरिया इन अ कल्चर प्लेट and lotus plants in pond are some examples of a population in earlier chapters you have learned that although an individual organism is the one that has to cope with a changed environment it is at the population level that natural selection operates to evolve the desired trait population ecology is therefore an important area because it links ecology to population genetics and evolution a population has certain attributes whereas an individual organism does not An individual may have births and deaths, but a population has birth rates and death rates. In a population, these rates refer to per capita births and deaths. The rates, hence expressed, are changed in numbers, increase or decrease, with respect to members of the population. Here is an example: If in a pond there are twenty lotus plants last year, and through reproduction eight new plants are added, taking the current population to twenty-eight, we calculate the birth rate as eight upon twenty. Is equal to zero point four of a spring per lotus per year. If four individuals in a in a laboratory population of forty fruit flies die during a specified time interval, say a week, the death rate in the population during that period is four upon forty is equal to zero point one individuals per fruit fly per week. Another attribute characteristics of a population is sex ratio. An individual is either a male or a female, but a population has a sex ratio. Sixty percent of population are females and forty percent males. A population at any given time is composed of individuals of different ages. If the age distribution percent individuals of a given age or age group is plotted for the population, the resulting structure is called an age pyramid. For human population, the age pyramids generally show age distribution of males and females in a diagram. The shape of the pyramids reflects the growth status of the population. whether it is growing stable or declining the size of the population tells us a lot about its status in the habitat whatever ecological processes we wish to investigate in a population be it the outcome of competition with another species the impact of a predator or the effect of a pesticide application we always evaluate them in terms of any change in the population size the size in nature could be as low as less than 10 siberian cranes at varadpur wetlands in any year or go into millions climadomonas in a pond population size technical technically called population density designated as n need not necessarily be measured in numbers only although total number is generally the most appropriate measure of population density it is in some cases either meaningless or difficult to determine in an area if there are 200 carat grass parthenium hystera forest plants but only a single use banyan tree with a large canopy stating that the population density of banyan is low relative to that of carrot grass amounts to underestimating the enormous role of the banyan in that community in such cases the percent cover or biomass is a more meaningful measure of the population size total number is again not an easily adaptable measure if the population is used and counting is impossible or very time consuming If you have a dense laboratory culture of bacteria in a petri dish, what is the best measure to report its density? Sometimes, for certain ecological investigations, there is no need to know the absolute population densities. Relative densities serve the purpose equally well. For instance, the number of fish caught per trap is good enough measure of its popu total population density in the lake. We are mostly obliged to estimate population sizes indirectly without actually counting them or seeing them. The tiger census in our national parks and tiger reserves is often based on pug marks and fecal pellets. Thirteen point two point two population growth. 
The size of a population for any species is not a static parameter. It keeps changing with time depending on various factors including food availability, predation pressure and adverse weather. In fact, it is these changes in population density that give us some idea of what is happening to the population, whether it is flourishing or declining. Whatever might be the ultimate reasons, the density of a population in a given habitat during a given period fluctuates due to changes in four basic processes, two of which, natality and eye migration, contribute to an increase in population density, and two, mortality and emigration, to a decrease. 1. Natality refers to the number of birds during a given period in the population that are added to the initial density. 2. Mortality is the number of deaths in the population during a given period. 3. Eye migration is the number of individuals of the same species that have come into the habitat from elsewhere during the time period under consideration. 4. Emigration is the number of individuals of the population who left the habitat and gone elsewhere during the time period under consideration. So, if n is the po population density at time t, then its density at time t plus 1 is n t plus 1 is equal to n t plus under bracket b plus i minus d plus e. You can see from the above equation, figure 13.5, that population density will increase if the number of births plus the number of i migrants b plus i is more than the number of deaths plus the number of emigrants d plus e. Under normal conditions, births and deaths are the most important factors influencing population density, the other two factors assuming importance only under special conditions. For instance, if a new habitat is just being colonized, eye migration may contribute more significantly to population growth than birth rates. Growth Models Does the growth of a population with time show any specific and predictable pattern? We have been concerned about unbridled human population growth and problems created by it in our country and it is therefore natural for us to be curious if different animal populations in nature behave the same way or show some restraints on growth. Perhaps we can learn a lesson or two from nature on how to control population growth. 1. Exponential Growth Resource, food and space availability is obviously essential for the unimp unimpeded growth of a population. Ideally, when resources in the habitat are unlimited, each species has the ability to realize fully its innate potential to grow in number, as Darwin observed while developing his theory of natural selection. Then the population grows in an exponential or geometric fashion. If in a population of size n, the birth rates, not total number but per capita births, are represented as b and death rates again per capita death rate as d then the increase or decrease in n during a unit time period t dn by dt will be dn by dt is equal to b minus d into n let b minus d is equal to r then dn by dt is equal to rn the r in this equation is called the intrinsic rate of natural increase and is a very important parameter chosen for assessing impacts of any biotic or abiotic factor on population growth to give you some idea about the magnitude of R values, for the Norway rat, the R is 0.015 and for the floor beetle, it is 0.12. In 1981, the R value for human population in India was 0.0205. Find out what the current R value is. For calculating it, you need to know the birth rates and death rates. The above equation describes the exponential geometric growth pattern of a population, figure 13.6, and results in a J-shaped when we plot n in, in relation to time. If you are familiar with basic calculus, you can derive the integral form of the exponential growth equation as nt is equal to n0 e ka power rt, where nt is equal to population density after time t, n0 n is equal to population density at density at, uh, n0 is equal to population density at time 0, r is equal to intrinsic rate of natural increase, e is equal to the base of natural logarithm under bracket 2.71828. Any species growing exponentially under unlimited resource conditions can reach enormous population density in a short time. Darwin showed how even a slow growing animal like elephant could reach enormous numbers in the absence of checks. The following is an anecdote popularly narrated to demonstrate dramatically how fast a huge population could build up when growing exponentially. The king and the minister sat for a chess game. The king, confident of winning the game, was ready to accept any bet proposed by the minister. The minister humbly said that if he won, he wanted only some wheat grains, the quantity of which is to be calculated by placing on the chessboard one grain in a square one, 
then 2 in square 2, then 4 in square 3, and 8 in square 4, and so on. Doubling each time the previous, previous quantity of wheat on the next square until all the 64 squares were filled. The king accepted the seemingly silly bet and started the game, but unluckily for him the minister won. The king felt that fulfilling the minister's bet was so easy. He started with a single grain on the first square and proceeded to fill the other squares following minister's suggested procedure. But by the time he covered half the chessboard, the king realized to his dismay that all the wheat produced in his entire kingdom pulled together would still be inadequate to cover all the 64 squares. Now think of a tiny paramecium starting with just one individual and through binary fusion doubling in numbers every day and imagine what a mind-boggling population size it would reach in 64 days, provided food and space remain unlimited. 2. Logistic Growth no population of any species in nature has at its disposal unlimited resources to permit exponential growth. This leads to competition between individuals for limited resources. Eventually, the fittest individual will survive and reproduce. The governments of many countries have also realized this fact and introduced various restraints with a view to limit human population growth. In nature, a given habitat has enough resources to support a maximum possible number, beyond which no further growth is possible. Let us call this limit as nature's carrying capacity, K, for that species in that habitat. A population growing in a habit with limited, habitat with limited resources show initially a lag phase, followed by phases of acceleration and deceleration, and finally an asymptote when the population density reaches the carrying capacity. A plot of n in relation to time t results in a sigmoid curve. This type of population growth is called per, world herd per logistic growth and is described by the following equation dn by dt is equal to rn under bracket k minus n upon k where n is equal to population density at time t r is intrinsic rate of natural increase k is equal to carrying capacity since resources for growth for most animal populations are finite and become limiting sooner or later the logistic growth model is considered a more realistic one gather from government census data <clears throat> the population figures from India for the last 100 years, plot them and check which growth pattern is evident. 13.2.3 Life History Variation Populations evolve to maximize their productive fitness, also called Darwinian fitness, high R value, in the habitat in which they live. Under a particular set of selection pressures, organisms evolve towards the most efficient productive strategy. Some organisms breed only once in their lifetime, Pacific salmon, fish, bamboo, while others breed many times during their lifetime, most birds and mammals. Some produce a large number of small-sized offspring, oysters, pelagic fishes, while others produce a small number of large-sized offspring, birds, mammals. So, which is desirable for maximizing fitness? Ecologists suggest that life history traits of organisms have evolved in relation to the constraints imposed by the abiotic and biotic components of the habitat in which they live. The evolution of life history traits in different species is currently an important area of research being conducted by ecologists. 13.2.4 Population Interactions Can you think of any natural habitat on earth that is inhabited just by a single species? There is no such habitat and such a situation is even inconceivable. For any species, the minimal requirement is one more species on which it can feed. Even a plant species which makes its own food cannot survive alone. It needs soil microbes or break down the organic matter in soil and return the inorganic nutrients for absorption. And then how will the plant manage pollination without an animal agent? It is obvious that in nature, animals, plants and microbes do not and cannot live in isolation but interact in various ways to form a biological community. Even in minimal, minimal communities, many interactive linkages exist, although all may not be readily apparent. Interspecific interactions arise from the interaction of populations of two different species. They could be beneficial, detrimental, or neutral, neither harm nor benefit to one of the species or both. Assigning a plus sign for beneficial interaction, minus sign for detrimental, and zero for neutral interaction. Let us look at all the possible outcomes of interspecific interactions. Table 13.4 Table 13.1 Population interactions a species A plus a species B plus name of interaction mutualism. A species A minus a species B minus name of interaction competition. A species A plus a species B minus name of interaction predation. 
species A plus, species B minus, name of interaction parasitism. Species A plus, species B zero, name of interaction commensalism. Species A minus, species B zero, name of interaction amensalism. Both the species benefit in mutualism and both lose in competition in their interactions with each other. In both parasitism and predation, only one species benefits, parasite and predator respectively, and the interaction is detrimental to the other species, host and prey respectively. The interaction where one species is benefited and the other is neither benefited nor harmed is called commensalism. In amensalism, on the other hand, one species is harmed whereas the other is unaffected. Predation, parasitism and commensalism share a common characteristic. The interacting species live closely together. 1. Predation What would happen to all the energy fixed by autotrophic organisms if the community has no animals to eat the plants? You can think of predation as nature's way of transferring to higher trophic levels the energy fixed by plants. When we think of predator and prey, most probably it is the, it is the tiger and deer that readily come to our mind. But a, narrow eating any seed, but a sparrow eating any seed is no less a predator. Although animals eating plants are categorized separately as herbivores, they are in a broad ecological context not very different from predators. Besides acting as conduits for energy transfer across trophic levels, predators play other important roles. They keep prey, they keep prey population under control, but for predators, the prey species could achieve very high population densities and cause ecosystem instability. When certain exotic species are introduced into a geographical area, they become invasive and start spreading fast because the invaded land does not have its natural predators. The prickly pear cactus introduced into Australia in the early 1920s caused havoc by spreading rapidly into millions of hectares of rangeland. Finally, the invasive cactus was brought under control only after a cactus feeding predator, a moth, from its natural habitat was introduced into the country. Biological control methods adopted in agricultural pest control are based on the ability of the predator to regulate prey population. Predators also help in maintaining a species diversity in a community by reducing the intensity of competition among competing prey species. In the rocky intertidal communities of the American Pacific coast, the starfish disaster is an important predator. In a field experiment, when all the starfish were removed from an enclosed intertidal area, more than 10 species of invertebrates became extinct within a year because of interspecific competition. If a predator is too efficient and overexploits its prey, then the prey might become extinct and following it, the predator will also become extinct for lack of food. This is the reason why predators in nature are prudent. Prey species have evolved various defenses of lessen the impact of predation. Some species of insects and uh, frogs are cryptically colored, camouflaged, to avoid being detected easily by the predator. Some are poisonous and therefore avoided by the predators. The monarch butterfly is highly distasteful to its predator bird because of a special chemical present in its body. Interestingly, the butter butterfly acquires this chemical during its caterpillar stage by feeding on a poisonous weed. For plants, herbivores are the predators. Nearly 25% of all insects are known to be phytophagous, feeding on plant sap and other parts of plants. The problem is particularly severe for plants because unlike animals, they cannot run away from their predators. Plants therefore away have evolved an astonishing variety of morphological and chemical defenses against herbivores. Thorns, acacia, cactus are the most commonly morphological means of defense. Many plants produce and store chemicals that make the herbivores sick when they are eaten. Inhibit feeding or digestion, disrupts its reproduction or even kill it. You must have seen the wheat calotropis going in abundant fields. The plant produces highly poisonous cardiac glycosides and that is why you never see any cattle or goats growing on browsing on this plant. Wide variety of chemical substances that we extract from plants on a commercial scale, nicotine, caffeine, quinine, estarquinine, opium, etc. are produced by them actually as defenses against grazers and browsers. <clears throat> 3. Competition When Darwin spoke of a struggle for existence and survival of the fittest in nature, he was convinced that interspecific competition is a potent force in organic evolution. It is generally believed that competition occurs when closely related species compete for the same resources that are limiting. But this is not entirely true. 
Firstly, totally unrelated species could also compete for the same resource. For instance, in some shallow South American lakes, visiting flamingos and resident fishes compete for their common food, the zooplankton in the lake. Secondly, resources need not be limiting for competition to occur. In interference competition, the feeding efficiency of one species might be reduced due to interfering and inhibitory presence of the other species, even if resources, food and space are abundant. Therefore, competition is best defined as a process in which the fitness of one species is measured in terms of its R, the intrinsic rate of increase is significantly lower in the presence of another species. It is relatively easy to demonstrate in laboratory experiments as Gauss and other experimental ecologists did. When resources are limited, the competitively superior species will eventually eliminate the other species. But evidence for such competition, a competitive exclusion occurring in nature is not always conclusive. A strong and persuasive circumstantial evidence does exist, however, in some cases. The abandoned tortoise in Galapagos Islands became extinct within a decade after goats were introduced on the island, apparently due to the greater browsing efficiency of the goats. Another evidence for Another evidence for the occurrence of competition in nature comes from what is called competitive release. A species whose distribution is restricted to a small geographical area because of the presence of a competitively superior species is found to expand its distributional range dramatically when the competing species is experimentally removed. Connell Seligan field experiment showed that on the rocky sea coast of Scotland, the larger and competitively superior Barnacle Baranus dominates the intertidal area and excludes the smaller barnacle chathamulus from that zone. In general, herbivores and plants appear to be more adversely affected by competition than carnivores. Gauss's competitively, a competitive exclusion principle states that two closely related species competing for the same resources cannot coexist indefinitely and the competitively inferior one will be eliminated eventually. This may be true if resources are limiting, but not otherwise. More recent studies do not support such gross generalization about competition. While they do not rule out the occurrence of interspecific competition in nature, they point out that a species facing competition might evolve mechanisms that promote coexistence rather than exclusion. One such mechanism is resource partitioning. If two species compete for the same resource, they could avoid competition by choosing, for instance, different times for feeding or different foraging patterns. MacArthur showed that five closely related species of warblers living on the same tree were able to avoid competition and coexist due to behavioral difference in their foraging activities. 3. Parasitism Considering that the parasitic mode of life ensures free lodging and meals, it is not surprising that parasitism has evolved in so many taxonomic groups from plants to higher vertebrates. Many parasites have evolved to be host-specific. They can parasitize only a single species of host in such a way that both host and the parasite tend to co-evolve. That is, if the host evolved a special mechanism for resisting or resisting the parasite, the parasite has to evolve mechanisms to counteract and neutralize them in order to be successful with the same host species. In accordance with their lifestyles, parasites evolved spatial adaptations such as loss of unnecessary sense organs, presence of adhesive organs or suckers to cling onto the host, loss of digestive system and high reproductive capacity. The life cycles of parasites are often complex, involving one or two intermediate hosts or vectors to facilitate parasitization of its primary host. The human liver fluke, a trematode parasite, depends on two intermediate hosts, a snail and a fish, to complete its life cycle. The, mal the malarial parasite needs a vector, mosquito, to spread to other hosts. Majority of the parasites harm the host. They may reduce the survival, growth, and reproduction of the host and reduce its population density. They might render the host more vulnerable to predation by making it physically weak. Do you believe that an ideal parasite should be able to thrive within the host without harming it? Then why didn't natural selection lead to the evolution of such totally harmless parasites? Parasites that feed on the external surface of the host organism are called ectoparasites. The most familiar examples of this group are the lice on humans and ticks on dogs. Many marine fish are infested with ectoparasitic copepods. Cascuta, a parasitic plant that is commonly found growing on hedge plants, has lost its chlorophyll and leaves in the course of evolution. It derives its nutrition from the host plant which it parasitizes. The female mosquito is not considered a parasite, although it needs our blood for reproduction. Can you explain why? 
In contrast, endoparasites are those that live inside the host body at different sites, liver, kidney, lungs, red blood cells, etc. The life cycles of endoparasites are more complex because of their extreme specialization. Their morphological and anatomical features are greatly simplified while emphasizing their reproductive potential. Root parasitism in birds is a fascinating example of parasitism in which the parasitic bird lays its eggs in the nest of its host and lets the host incubate them. During the course of evolution, the eggs of the parasitic bird have evolved to resemble the host eggs in size and color to reduce the chances of the host bird detecting the foreign eggs and, and ejecting them from the nest. Try to follow the movements of the cuckoo quail and the crow in your neighborhood park during the breeding season as spring to summer and watch brood parasitism in action. 4. Commensalism. This is the interaction in which one species benefits and the other is neither harmed nor benefited. An orchid growing as an epiphyte on a mango branch and barnacles growing on the back of a whale benefit while neither the mango tree nor the whale derives any apparent benefit. The cattle egret and grazing cattle in close association, a site you are most likely to catch if you live in farm rural areas, is a classic example of commensalism. The egret always forests close to where the cattle are grazing because the cattle as they move stir up and flush out insects from vegetation that otherwise might be difficult for the egrets to find and catch. Another example of commensalism is the interaction between sea anemone that has stinging, stinging tentacles and the clownfish that lives among them. The fish gets protection from the predators which stay away from the stinging tentacles. The anemone does not appear to drive any benefit by hosting the clownfish. 5. Mutualism This interaction confers benefits on both the interacting species. Lichens represent an intimate mutualistic relationship between a fungus and photosynthesizing algae or cyanobacteria. Similarly, the mycorrhiza are associations between fungi and the roots of higher plants. The fungi help the plant in the absorption of essential nutrients from the soil, while the plant in turn provides the fungi with energy yielding carbohydrates. The most spectacular and evolutionarily fascinating examples of mutualism are found in plant-animal relationship. Plants need the help of animals for pollinating their flowers and dispersing their seeds. Animals obviously have to be paid fees for the services that plants expect from them. Plants offer rewards or fees in the form of pollen and nectar for pollinators and juicy and nutritious fruits for seed dispersers. But the mutually beneficial system should also be safeguarded against cheaters, for example, animals that try to steal nectar without add aiding in pollination. Now you can see why plant-animal interactions often evolve coevolution of the mutualist, that is, the evolutions of the flower and its pollinator species are tightly linked with one another. In many species of fig trees, there is a tight one-to-one -one relationship with the pollinator species of wasp. It means that a given fig species can be pollinated only by its partner wasp species and no other species. The female wasp uses the fruit not only as an oviposition egg-laying site but uses the developing site seeds within the fruit for nourishing its larva. The wasp pollin pollinates the fig in fluorescence while searching for suitable egg-laying sites. In return for the favor of pollination, the fig offers the wasp some of its developing seeds as food for the de developing wasp larva. Orchids show a bewildering diversity of floral patterns, many of which have evolved to attract the right pollinator insect, bees and bumblebees, and ensure guaranteed pollination by it. Not all orchids offer rewards. The Mediterranean orchid offers employ sexual deceit to get pollination done by a species of bee. One petal of its flower bears an uncanny resemblance to the female of the bee in, is in size, color, and markings. The male bee is attracted to what is perceived as a female, she copulates with the flower, and during that process is dusted with pollen from the flower. When this same bee pseudo copulates with another flower, it transfers pollen to it and thus pollinates the flower. Here you can see how co-evolution operates. If the female bee's color patterns change even slightly for any reason during evolution, pollination success will be reduced unless the orchid flower co-evolves to maintain the resemblance of its petal to the female bee. Summary As a branch of biology, ecology is the study of the relationship of living organisms with the abiotic physico-chemical factors and biotic components other species of their environment. It is concerned with four levels of biological organization, organisms, populations, communities, and biomes. 
temperature, light, water, and soil are the most important physical factors of the environment to which the organisms are adapted in various ways. Maintenance of a constant internal environment homeostasis by the organisms contributes to its optimal performance, but only some organisms regulators are capable of homeostasis in the face of changing external environment. Others either partially regulate their internal environment or simply conform. A few other species have evolved adaptations to avoid unfavorable conditions in a space, migration, or in time, estivation, hibernation, and diapause. Evolutionary changes through natural selection take place at the population level and hence population ecology is an important area of ecology. A population is a group of individuals of a given a species sharing and competing for similar resources in a defined geographical area. Populations have attributes that individual organisms do not birth rates and death rates, sex ratio and age distribution. The proportion of different age groups of males and females in a population is often presented graphically as age pyramid. Its shape indicates whether a population is stationary, growing or declining. Ecological effects of any factors on a population are generally reflected in its size, population density, which may be expressed in different ways, numbers, biomass, percent cover, etc., depending on the species. Populations grow through births and immigration and decline through deaths and emigration. When resources are unlimited, the growth is usually exponential, but when resources become progressively limiting, the growth patterns turns logistic. In either case, growth is ultimately limited by the carrying capacity of the environment. The intrinsic rate of natural increase, R, is a measure of the inherent potential of a population to grow. In nature, populations of different species in a habitat do not live in isolation but interact in many ways. Depending on the outcome, these interactions between two species are classified as competition. Both species suffer predation and parasitism. One benefits and the other suffers. Commensalism, one benefits and the other is unaffected. Amensalism, one is harmed, other unaffected. And mutualism, both species benefit. Predation is a very important process. Though which, though which trophic energy transfer is facilitated and some predators help in controlling their prey populations. Plants have evolved diverse morphological and chemical defenses against herbivores. In competition, it is presumed that the superior competitor eliminates the inferior one, the competitive exclusion principle. But many closely related species have evolved various mechanisms which facilitate their coexistence. Some of the most uh, fascinating cases of mutualism in nature are seen in plant-pollinator interactions. That's all for today. Thanks for listening.